Hi, my name is Lars Andersen. Two months ago was made a video about me, and since it has become the most seen Archer video ever. On my not so perfect English, I will try to answer some of all the questions people have asked. Can I actually grab an arrow? I can grab an arrow, but not from a heavy war bow. I can do it at distance or from not so heavy bow. Here I grab an arrow without no bow. This is obviously just luck. The most difficult grab I can actually do is grip the arrow in the air and return it before I land. And I do it a couple of times just to show it's not luck. The Danish archer's Lars Anderson has rediscovered an old and very fast way to shoot bows. In 60,000 years, man has shot with bows and arrows. All known cultures have used archery as a weapon. And there were many master archers, and many different ways to shoot bows. But then came gunpowder weapons. And then disappeared archery and was forgotten. Many centuries later, was archery reinvented? But now as a sport. Popular movies are trying to recreate the past champion archers. But it's difficult when we have forgotten the old techniques. Film hero Legolas was created to be the ultimate archer, much faster than reality. So no real man should be able to shoot faster. But the Danish archer Lars Anderson uses one of the old forgotten champion archer methods. So he can easily do it. If we compare Lars Anderson with the fastest real archers, to see how long it takes to shoot 10 arrows. One, two, four, five, Lars Anderson shoot 10 arrows at 4.9 seconds. The other archers are all really, really good archers and to compare is not fair. They use at least three movements to shoot an arrow. While Lars Anderson only need a single movement to shoot a new arrow. The old master technique is to hold the arrow in hand and not have them in the quiver. <coughs> Earlier times war archers was very much faster than we now imagine it. Most knowledge about past archery is lost, but there are a few surviving old books. We know with certainty that the Saracens who fought with the Crusaders were tested, to shoot three arrows at less than one and one half seconds. Modern archers have said, it cannot be right. No one can shoot as fast. But Lars Anderson thought if the books are correct, then there is something wrong with modern archery. And then he started four years ago to learn the old techniques to be just as fast all over the world. Why? Because modern archers do not move. They stand still, firing at a target board, something that was unknown in the past. These archers also started placing the arrow on the left side of the bow, just as archers do in movies. This is probably due to the fact that aiming at a stationary two-dimensional target makes you aim with one eye instead of two. This one-eyed aiming also led to bows with front sights and other technical gadgets, but that's another story. However, placing the arrow left around the bow is not good while you're in motion. By placing the arrow on the left side, your hand is on the wrong side of the string, so you need several movements before you can actually shoot. From studying old pictures of archers, Lars discovered that some historical archers held their arrows on the right side of the bow. This means that the arrow can be drawn and fired in one single motion, which is both faster and better. And this was not the only problem with archery today. Lars realized that what we thought was historical archery only works well for modern target archery and Hollywood films. If he wanted to learn to shoot like the master archers of old, he would have to unlearn what he had learned and start reading historical manuscripts instead. He would have to find his way back to a time when archery was simpler and more natural, exactly like throwing a ball. In essence, making archery as simple as possible. It is harder to learn how to shoot this way, but it gives more options and ultimately, it's also more fun. A war archer must have total control over his bow in all situations and must be able to handle his bow and arrows in a controlled way under the most varied of circumstances. The old manuscripts told Lars that master archers could shoot the bow with both hands and still hit the target, so he began practicing. It is also described that an archer in motion must be able to hit a blade so that the arrow splits in two parts, like this. Archers could also pick up enemy arrows and shoot them back. Or grab arrows while on the move and fire them rapidly. 
There are even myths of archers who could grab an enemy's arrow and shoot it back at him. Lars took it a step further and is now able to catch an arrow while jumping and fire it before he hits the ground. Perhaps most importantly, modern slow archery has led people to believe that war archers only shot at long distances. However, Lars found that they could shoot at any distance, even up close. This does require the ability to fire fast though. In the beginning, archers probably drew arrows from quivers or belts, but since then, they started holding the arrows in the bow hand, and later in the draw hand. Taking it to this third level, that of holding arrows in the draw hand, requires immense practice and skill, and only professional archers, hunters, and so on would have had the time for it. When guns started replacing bows, this technique was forgotten, and the only reason Lars is able to do it is because he spent years practicing intensely. The hard part is not learning how to hold the arrows, but learning how to handle them properly and draw and fire in one single motion, no matter what method is used. It works in all positions and while in motion, whether rolling, running, or on horseback. It also works with sharp arrows and powerful bows. And while there is no doubt that those war archers of the past were stronger and more fit than Lars's, his arrows still penetrate chainmail armor and the heavy gambeson worn beneath it. It is difficult to compare actual striking power though. Modern archers use only one hand, but in the past some archers allegedly used both hands to give the arrow more power. Old manuscripts tell us that it was common to hold three arrows in the draw hand at once while keeping more in a belt quiver. We know that some archers held more, and in a way the bow was the ultimate weapon. Who can escape ten arrows fired quickly after another? From old texts, we know that Saracen archers were expected to be able to fire three arrows in 1.5 seconds, and very skilled archers were even faster. Lars has managed to shoot three arrows in 0.6 seconds, but while speed is important, hitting the target is essential. To test accuracy and speed at the same time, Lars set up an experiment where he shot incoming arrows with arrows of his own. But he took it one step further. In the 1938 movie, The Adventures of Robin Hood, Nothing to do with Arthur's Paradox. Arthur's Paradox means that the arrow is pushed together by the force and then vibrate in the beginning. The arrow left or arrow right just fly a little to one side. And anyone can learn to aim a little to one side. In easy, anyone can learn it in a few weeks. The same guy also claimed it not physical possible to split an arrow at more than 10 feet. And by the way, I'm cheating and only do it at 3 feet. Here's more than 10 feet and the arrow split. And the fun part is actually the archer's paradox do that in the beginning, as I said, it go from side to side and to split an arrow, the arrow must fly straight. So it's actually more difficult at short distance than at a long distance. A lot of people have asked me, can I really hit an incoming arrow? And yes, I can do it. But it's a very difficult thing to do. Don't try to do it yourself. Once you not hit the arrow right. The most difficult thing I've done was try to do it without having time to look. I just turn around myself and instantly see it. There's no time for aiming or anything else. I can basically just on scientific feel there and nothing else.